Hey everybody, it's me, Zach, this is Judy, and welcome back to our channel. Hey everybody, it's me, Zach, and I am back, back, back again because Amberlynn has continued to post pretty consistently every other day. And I did take another little break because there was a U.S. holiday where we eat turkey and things like that. So I did spend some time with Noel and our friends, but also spent a significant amount of time at the emergency vet with a little post of doodle do because he's having just some gastrointestinal issues and wasn't eating, was throwing up a little bit. We got some medicine for him, but not exactly where I planned to spend a lot of my turkey day. In fact, I was considering filming in my head. I'm like, oh, we'll have time. We'll have time while things are getting cooked and things like that, but nope, instead I didn't. Uh, so put some positive thoughts in the air for Poe. I'm pretty sure he's gonna be fine. He could, he could use your positive energy. But with that being said, I did see that Amberlynn posted a new vlog called I'm done, dot, 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 bar, day 15 weigh-in, bar, vlog. I'm curious what it could mean. <laughs> I think I can guess what it means, which is this day 15 might be the end the, of the, of the weigh-in for 100 days, which is just like so standard for Miss Amberlynn Reed. <laughs> But here we are. So if that is the case, you better believe I've got the hat, I've got the candle, I've got the earrings on standby, and we can we can hold an impromptu service if necessary, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm ready to do it. Now, I have to say, though, if that is the case, things are not looking good for the December months ahead, because December 1st is next week, besties. Vlogmas is next week. And homegirl thinks she's going to make it the whole month. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. She does the best, honestly, when she doesn't announce any of her plans of what she's going to do to anybody, you know? Like when she just decided for herself that she was going to start posting every other day and we kind of got into the habit of that, but she never made promises about that, she did great. When she was working on her weight and health, off screen and didn't tell us about that, she did great. It's when she starts telling us about things that it, it just doesn't work out for her. So anyways, let me stop speculating about what could happen and let's just get into the actual video because it is 16 minutes long. All right, let's get to, let's get to. Oh, but before we do that, this weekend for Black Friday and or Cyber Monday, there is a 15% off deal on everything in my merch shop. So I'll leave a link down below as I always do in the description box, but if you wanna go check it out, go check it out. November 17th, here we go. Hello, hello. Hey. Welcome to a new video. The Cruella de Vil vibes, you know, just like the half black, half white. I'm loving it. Sorry, it's eight seconds in and I already paused it. Today is day 15, November 17th. So I'm going to show you guys my way in. Just get that right. Let's do it. Way. So I was 504.4 today, which means I have 48.2 to go to reach my first mini goal of 456.2. Okay, okay, okay. And I lost over two pounds. I lost like 2.4 overnight because yesterday was an intuitive eating day. No. That means I was on track yesterday, which makes okay. me really happy. Okay, I, I'm glad you were on track doing what you wanted to do. <laughs> I'm glad, but literally like the other day when you gained two pounds, it wasn't because you were doing the wrong or right thing. It was just fluctuations. It was just lipedema. So like, let's just, let's just keep this based in logic, rationale, et cetera, because I'm very happy you're losing, but it was like one day, you know, and, and that's like, that's always been my struggle with her weighing herself in every day is that she gets so caught up on like the minutia of how much she gains or loses in just one day that like I think for somebody who has all of the experiences that she has it just like doesn't work out for her mentally you know what I'm saying like it, and all do like kindness and respect I think it like F's with how she thinks about her weight and I think she'd just be better off. I'm not a professional in any kind of way. It's just like from what I've seen from her experiences, you know? 
I'm on track nine times out of 10, I'll either lose a little bit of weight, stay the same or gain a couple ounces. But then it's like when I overeat or when I binge, that's when I like gain like a lot of weight. Yes, that that is how I would expect it to work. <laughs> like what is she trying to explain there? And through this whole situation take deal, we can definitely tell based on like the days where I've binged, how much I've gained, days where I've been intuitive, how much I've lost, or just like stay the same. I know you guys see me here Do a I? lot. This is oh. actually my desk. I don't know if you guys know that. I see you here and in the bathroom a lot. Yes, those are your favorite places to film. Um, I have a gallery wall. Um, my girlfriend Art. has her desk right next to mine. We have matching desks. This is actually the office. Um, I sit huh. in here to do a lot. Um, I watch my YouTube in here. I edit my videos in here. <laughs> There's always a rarity in here. I watch my YouTube in here. I'm trying not to be too judgmental because, like, as somebody who has a whole YouTube gig, obviously this is the space that I do my YouTube gig in. And I do watch my YouTube in here, too. But I just am, like, trying to imagine, because I think about this a lot with me and Noel. Like, on the other side of this wall is Noel's office slash a guest bedroom. And I think often about how goofy it is that Noel could be in, like, a professional meeting. And on the other side of this wall, I'm, like, hooting and hollering and giggling and laughing and doing stupid, stupid stuff. <laughs> And so I just can't imagine. I don't know, obviously, what Wifey does, but can you imagine Wifey being over there like, like click? Oh, I could actually just click. I forgot I have this keyboard right here. Uh, but just like clicking away, and Amber Lynn's like, look at my squiggle art. <laughs> look at my squiggle art. I love it. I love it. It's just majority of my time is spent in here uh -huh. because this is where I do everything. That's why you guys are seeing me in here a lot, so. Well, yeah, because, like, literally all you do is just sit here. <laughs> like, like that's, I also, like, I would love to see you some other places. Like, maybe not necessarily other places in your apartment, but, like, I don't know, places outside your apartment. It's been a while. I'm wearing my Corella DeVille um, oh. again. It's the first time. Oh. It's a size four. I We're on the same page that this is giving Corella. I got from Torrid. I wish I would have gotten a size smaller. Oh my god, I'm getting cat fur all over it. No! What did you I like expect? I to be like smaller. I don't want them to be like super overpowering. It depends. If they're more like sweatshirt style, like let's be comfy, then okay, maybe we can get it like normal size or a little what? bigger so it's like a comfy vibe but i particularly wanted this cardigan to be like more like fit hello so it's a cardigan <laughs> what do you mean what do you mean it's supposed to like cardigans the vibes are comfy cozy i don't i don't understand i guess i maybe have like one cardigan that I wouldn't define that way, but I don't understand what you're trying to say here. What's your point? <laughs> and also, where do you have to go or what do you have to do that you wouldn't just need to be comfy cozy for? I don't know if y'all noticed, but lately in in the recent years, <laughs> ever since the pandemic, I, I dress comfy cozy every day because why not? Where where am I where am I going during the day? If I'm getting dressed up, it's because I'm going out and about into the world somewhere. So I I, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I'm spending way too much time on her cardigan fashion choice. Uh, but I love fashion. I don't know if I've told you that before, but I'm fascinated by fashion including Amberlynn's. It's been like the whole day since I last spoke to you guys and I am in the same spot. I actually have not Surprise, in day. your bar. Um, bar. In your bar. <laughs> in your bar. In your bra. I have to say also though, something I didn't make note of or appreciate enough in the last video I reacted to where she was just sitting in a bra like this is that, you know, at the very least, it's not the same old dingy bra that she wore on her channel for a very, 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 very long time. So, you know, people say that Amber Lynn hasn't shown any growth on her channel, and I have to say that's at least one example of growth and change. I had an appointment today and stuff, but I was just sitting here. I was actually snacking on some 
black olives. Oh, I hate olives. I love olives. They're so good. Uh, I disagree, Olives but that's I love that for you. A certain type of craving that I get. I so. guess I guess she might have a tank top on too, or something like that. It definitely isn't just a bra. Let me clarify. It's nice to have olives um, in the house because they do not trigger me as much as other foods. So. Like broccoli. But um, how? I was receiving. How many goddamn times are you gonna show me this? Not, not let me not call it stupid. But how many times are you gonna show me this particular piece of art? I've seen a bunch of Instagrams today of people spelling beautiful in a really weird way, and I was like, what's happening? Oh, oh, she's gonna acknowledge her like, oh, I'm a quirky girl, I spelled beautiful weird. Okay. When I say a bunch, I mean like 10. So I was like, okay, the trolls are out tonight, I love that. And it's because of this. Right. So right here, uh -huh. a little poster you guys recently saw. Here, let me flip it around and show you guys. Recently, right I've seen it like 12 beautiful. times. But as you can see, happy accidents, mistakes are normal. This was on purpose because <laughs> I wanted a section on here where it's just like, you know what? Accidents happen. Mistakes are normal. It's okay. That's life. Um, I kind of wanted that on here. But yeah, I just, I wanted to click. You intentionally spelled it wrong so you could write happy accidents and mistakes are normal. I... <laughs> I don't know, Bessie. I, it would make more sense to say I realized I spelled it wrong and left out an A, and since it was in marker, I added in these fun little quirky statements about mistakes happen and and happy accidents and whatever. I would get that, but to say you intentionally, unless I'm misunderstanding what she's saying, but what it sounds like to me is she saying I intentionally spelled this wrong so that I could then also write happy accidents, mistakes are beautiful. I want to go back and listen because I feel like I'm in the crazy zone. This was on purpose because <laughs> I wanted a this, section on here where it's just like, you know what? This was accidents on purpose. Happen. Mistakes are normal. It's okay. This was, That's life. I purposely spelled this wrong. And also a better thing now that I can see it much more up close, I can see that she put hyphens in there. She put in hyphens so she could also, and what it looks like she did now that I can see closer, it looks like she was trying to like be really meaningful and be like, be you and then T full. Cause I also didn't even realize that there wasn't a, an I between the T and the F. I just, this continues to be a mystery to me. I don't, <laughs> I don't understand it at all. And you know what? Maybe her art isn't for me to understand. Maybe she's not making her doodle art for me. Um, I kind of wanted that on here, but yeah, I just, I wanted to clarify. I do know how to spell. I okay. Do spell the word beautiful. Don't worry. Okay. It's on purpose. And then I was also I sitting here thinking like, should I continue my hundred days of I swear to God. video form? Because I'm going to do it regardless. Um, Are you though? My goal was to do Are it you? in my personal life. Then, then make it your, I, how many times have I said this? D do this shit off camera if it's that important to you. You have historically done better when you did it off camera. But now you already made this promise to your community and you're just reliving every day of this where we start something and don't finish it and then you wonder why people get frustrated with you. My goal was to do it in my personal life regardless of if I show it or not and I just figured why not also show it on YouTube? Because I've tried the whole 100 days of uh -huh. waiting, particularly for YouTube. Um, it wasn't really like for personal reasons. It was just, I wanted to do it for YouTube. I thought it would be a fun challenge and for other people to do it with me. But this time's different. Like I want to do it like for myself and by myself. But I just figured, you know what? I'll vlog it while I'm doing it. Is it, is it different? Is it different? Because also I feel like in the past when you were weighing in every day, you, you went to lengths to lengths to tell everybody, like, this is helpful for me. I'm doing this because it's helpful for me, blah, 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 blah. And now you're saying, oh, all those other times before this, it was just for YouTube. Again, she, <laughs> she does it. 
<laughs> she doesn't think these things through, and then she's going to get upset because she's going to be like, no, I can't do anything right for anybody, and no matter what I do, people are going to be upset. And it's just like, no, I just want you to stick with one thing, period. I'm just wondering if I should, like, take that out of my videos and kind of just do it oh privately because I noticed that I am being a lot more, especially the first few days, I was a lot more, like, open about my eating and my binging. But then ever since, like, I stopped Ozempic and then keto and then, you know, I was very honest that I binged on Chips Ahoy and stuff and it's like people are so brutal and that in itself is triggering for any eating disorder well, to, for people to shame you um no matter what eating disorder it is is brutal like i can't go on any social media platform without seeing just like shame and i'm just like damn <laughs> well again this is why myself and others i'm not even like probably the only person to ever say this have suggested you don't do it on camera. And I would never, like, I'm, this is not justifying anything that anybody's ever said to you uh, about your eating disorder, about your weight, whoever, whatever. But also, like, it is clear, and you have said this multiple times, that, like, you have developed a community where people are going to say those things to you. And so I just don't understand why we keep repeating the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results. That's like what I'm struggling with here. Um, that's not gonna help me. So I don't really know what you're trying to do here. So. They're, they're not trying to help you, Amberlynn. This is, this is the whole thing. That's why you, <laughs> I, I've said it time and time again, but you have to be able to discern who the people are in your comments that are trying to be helpful and who the people are that are just trying to say rude, mean shit to you. Or you just need to stop looking at the comments altogether, but I know that's not something you're capable of doing. And so if you're gonna keep reading them, I would highly encourage you to find some way to figure out these people saying this mean stuff are not here to help me. Right now, currently, I'm just like, Okay, I'm definitely going to continue it in my personal life. Uh -huh. this every day until February 11th is not that difficult. It sure um, isn't. I just naturally like to weigh myself anyways, but it's like, do I want to continue filming it? So that is currently where my head is at on November 17th. Okay. Do I want to continue filming? So are we? This? Because it just seems like this is a beautiful way. A B U. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Stop it. For people to just like joke. Co comedy line trying to poke her head back in. It should be really exceptionally cruel. It's like a large portion of people forget that eating disorders are chemical. It's not something that I you just choose to have. It's not I don't, something that one day you just wake up and you're like, mm, you know what? I'm not gonna have an eating disorder anymore. I don't I, I don't I don't think a large majority of people do think about it like that. <laughs> I don't think a lot of people I think like most people understand that it's a very difficult like disease to overcome. I don't know. I mean I guess I should speak to myself. I definitely understand that. That's like why I do try to cut you some some grace and slack and understanding because I'm sure it is really difficult to do that. That's also why I, I hope you are working in depth with your psychologist to to talk about ways to find some kind of solutions. Like the last time we talked about your psychologist, you know, I talked about the things that people are frustrated is, is that feels like you're making no progress, you know, like you certainly aren't going to solve everything overnight, but you're not even able to identify any type of way that you've made any kind of like progress, big or small, you know? I don't know, I just find it really frustrating, the community that surrounds my channel and it breaks my heart to see, like I get Instagram messages of people just like, you know, I read your comments and I also suffer with an eating disorder. Uh -huh. People who suffer with the opposite of what I suffer with and people who suffer with the same thing I do. And they're just like, wow, you know, they made me feel like shit about myself, the comments, it's like, for some of you guys to read the comments and feel just as bad after reading them, like that sure. breaks my heart. Yeah, it's well, like maybe if I talk less about my binging and my weight, then the comments reflecting those topics will lessen. So then, you know, me and you guys can stop feeling like utter crap 
because we binge eat or sure. we restrict or we have whatever eating disorder it is. Because Well, okay, so here's the thing. I mean, I would also, I, again, not a professional. I just, in case you're annoyed by me saying I'm not a professional, I've started prefacing that ever since Amber Lynn was like, you're you're giving out medical misinformation because you're not an expert. I'm like, well, no shit. I've, I've never claimed to be. But I, I think just like from thinking about things that are uncomfortable for me to watch because of whatever triggering situation it is, I think that if you're in that place, if you have a binge eating disorder or any kind of eating disorder, it's probably not the best place to be, Amber Lynn's comments, you know? Probably also not even really watching Amber Lynn, but I could understand and why you would maybe want to if you were somebody who had one of those disorders, right? So, you know, I would I would say for you all and for Amberlynn, probably going into Amberlynn Reed's comments, not the best place, just because people are ridiculously shitty. I think also, though, for Amberlynn, it's like, you know, you, you go in these waves of wanting to be, like, really open and vulnerable and honest, and I think if that's something you want to do, do it. I think also, though, as I've said, and I feel like I'm getting to be a little bit of a broken record, but it's just, like, if you feel confident in sharing that stuff about yourself, that's great. Share it and also know what some of the feedback might be. Like, this came up for me recently when I talked about the stuff related to Chantal's husband doing this gesture and things like that in regards to my sexuality. And I said in that video, you know, I'm always a little bit hesitant to talk about my sexuality in any kind of way because it does tend to draw out homophobia, <laughs> you know? Like, like it was one thing for Sala to do something that people interpreted as homophobic towards me and it's another thing for me to talk about my sexuality and know that that's coming but I still talked about it knowing here are some boundaries I'm gonna create around the comments of that video like to be quite honest with you after the first day <laughs> of that video being live I have not returned to the comments of that video just because I anticipate there's probably somebody saying something rude heinous etc in there and I think you know, there's all kinds of ways that Amber Lynn could approach boundaries like that when she does want to talk about her eating disorder, but she just doesn't understand that as a concept. I mean, that in itself is something that she could talk about with her therapist psychologist, right? Like, she could have a conversation of, how do I set boundaries to help navigate my workplace, which is the internet, when I want to talk about things regarding my eating disorder, regarding my weight, etc. And I'm just not convinced, one, that she's done that, but actually she did for a while set some boundaries regarding the comments, and then like two days later she's like, JK, lol, I'm reading the comments. So it's like one thing to set a boundary and then also like, how are you going to uphold that boundary, you know? People shouldn't be judged for those things. People shouldn't be judged for their addictions. They sure shouldn't. Disgusting. I agree. I would share my journey to be judged or speculated on. And I know a lot of people are like, well, that's part of YouTube. That's just a disgusting way of saying, oh, well, deal with it. No. no. We need to work on, I, as a society, being able to sure. be open and I agree. fear bullying or harassment or just like really horrible things said, I, said to us it's just a lot of like if you don't want people to yeah. be rude to you don't talk about it instead no, of no we need to take the people who bully and harass and say horrible things offline like it's too much of the wrong thing See, I, I don't actually fully d disagree with her. I, I agree that, like, we shouldn't, uh, like, I, and I fear that what I'm saying could be interpreted as that. So, so let me clarify since she brought this up. I'm not saying people in the comments should be allowed to continue to be nasty. And it makes me think about a time where I was talking about the concept of, like, content warnings in the classroom. If you don't know, I have two degrees in education and value creating places where people feel comfortable in the classroom, right? And I had, I was talking about this on Facebook and this has been a few years, uh, many years actually at this point. And I, one of my cousins was like, Zach, you, you need to, you need to equip these students to be tougher. You need to equip these students to be able to approach life like, 
if, if we just create these spaces where, like, people can't say whatever, whoever, however, then none of these people are going to be able to go into life knowing how to deal with, like, bullies or people who are mean, etc. And I kindly to my cousin was like, you're missing the point. It's not that I'm not giving my students the skills to go out there and be tough against it. It's that we're, we're creating a balance, right? Like, we know, regardless of what happens, that there are going to be spaces where people are rude, mean, say offensive shit, etc. We can also give them tools, like I'm trying to suggest for Amber Lynn, of how we can combat that, how we can prepare ourselves to deal with that. And that's why I'm saying in this case, she can create a space around her channel where she says, you know what, it's really important to me because I think we should be talking about these things and still set some boundaries for herself that will prevent herself from getting harmed, you know? I don't disagree that there should be less nasty, mean people in the world. I think I think we could all agree to that. We can also protect ourselves from that as well. And that's, that's my only suggestion to Amber Lynn. I'm not even saying don't talk about it at all. I'm saying if you're going to talk about it, manage the expectations you have of, of your audience that you know exists and find a way to power through it. You know what I'm saying? Does that resonate with the people in my audience and my chat? If that makes sense. But while we're here and I'm contemplating what I want to do, I do want to answer a hot topic that's going around. A hot is, topic? What do you mean that you're just as triggered eating broccoli <laughs> versus eating... Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm eating broccoli. Yeah, 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 yeah. She did, she did say that in a video, which I also was like, when she did a, a grocery haul, like, two videos later, and she's putting the broccoli away, I was like, oh, no, girl, better, better stay away from that broccoli. In my head, I correlate bad and good food. This is something I talked to my psychologist about. We've already discussed this. So you okay. don't have to sit there and say, talk to a professional about this. It's already been spoken about. Okay. We've already talked about it. She's already, you know, tried to give me tips to help me, et cetera, et cetera. It she worked. Me, like, the backstory of why people are like this, because I'm not the only one. Don't come for me. I'm not, so the I'm reason not. why things like broccoli or just, like, healthy foods, whole foods, no matter what it is, um, triggers me is because when you grew up like me or you grew up with an eating disorder or constant, like, calorie counting, this and that. Uh -huh. When you think of certain foods, you think of bad foods and you think of good foods. Okay. And when I'm eating broccoli or, like, say, green beans or something just, like, really healthy, because when I eat, like, broccoli and stuff, I don't put cheese, I don't put things like that. Like, I steam my broccoli and I call it a day. I don't put anything on it. Unless I'm, like, mixing it with, like, a marinara sauce because I'm having it with spaghetti, um, like, Nine times out of ten, if I'm having pasta with broccoli, I like to mix it. But Girl, talking about just having broccoli, no seasoning, nothing on it. I wouldn't want to eat broccoli either, to be honest with you. Broccoli tastes best when it is seasoned and it has more going on than just like plain steamed broccoli. But usually broccoli is just like a side. But anyways, broccoli is just an example. So okay. honestly, when I think of broccoli, I think of like... Okay, this is good food. And it triggers me into thinking about the bad food. Like, so okay. I've treated myself with my eating disorder, my addiction, et cetera, et cetera. Like, if I'm eating broccoli, then I'm, like, punishing myself because I'm telling myself I can't have bad food. I can only have good. And okay. by doing that, you're taking away moderation. And my psychologist tries to teach me that someone with binge eating needs moderation uh -huh. and nine times out of ten if i am eating broccoli then i'm also eating something super healthy so my brain subconsciously is like oh you can never have bad food again you can only eat this good food so then it makes it to where i want bad food more I, than i've ever i see it. it's kind of like if you tell a kid they can't touch their Christmas toys than their okay, okay, okay. Christmas toys. If you tell a kid they can't go into a certain bedroom in the house because there's something in there, then the kids okay. don't want to. See, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad she explained where she's coming from with this, actually, to be quite honest with you, because surprise alert, spoiler alert, Amber Lynn is bad at communication. <laughs> and so when she initially brought this up, I think the reason people were confused is because she said, it doesn't matter if it's broccoli or cookies, I'm going to binge. And 
people are like, well, wouldn't you rather just binge on broccoli? Because the way she made it sound is, even if I have broccoli in my house, I'm going to binge on the broccoli. But what she's really saying is that because she's limiting herself to eating just broccoli, it makes her want the bad, the quote unquote bad stuff more, which does make sense. That's like, that seems like a more understandable thing because I, I don't know that any of us believed that she was binging on broccoli, but that was the way that she made it sound. So I do understand that. I'm glad you talked to your psychologist about that. Uh, and I would be, the part of this that's missing for me that I would like to hear more about and, and I think could be helpful to people in similar situations is like, what are the tips that your psychologist gave? Because, you know, if you want to be like inspirational and helpful to the people watching you, I think that might be something people were interested in. I'm also then though curious about how you just did keto which also sounds like we're dividing foods into good foods and bad foods, right? Like, to be good on our diet, we have to eat these keto-approved foods. And I'm curious, like, did you talk to your psychologist about that? You know what I'm saying? It's that type of thing. If you tell someone they can't do something, they're going to want to do it even more. So my psychologist has tried to explain that to me a little bit more and things that I can do. And what she, what she explains is, like, try your hardest not to think of food you know, bad food, good food. Just think of food as food. And it's just like, it's so hard to do, especially like be on YouTube because no matter what I eat, sure. like I just showed you guys I was having olives and I know I'm going to get a lot of complaints about that. People are going to be like, oh my God, so much sodium. Oh my God, this is so, so bad for you. And it's like, as someone with binge eating, you can't look at foods as good and bad. You have right. To just look at them. Well then, well then, okay, you just, I just like wish you would listen to what you just said then. Because you just said, showing my food on YouTube leads to other people reinforcing my concept of good and bad food. So, like, let's not show the food on on YouTube then. You know? Like, that That seems like such an easy fix. <laughs> you, you, but do you feel, like, do you hear, like, what is going on here? Like, I agree. It, that sounds like some really helpful advice. It doesn't sound like your therapist told you stop posting your food on YouTube, but I would just think that that would be... A, a quick fix. I mean, it's not going to fix everything, obviously, but it's certainly going to be more positive for you. It's a fuel. I don't know. It's really confusing, and it's unfortunate that, you know, it's just constant battles in my brain. Sure. Regardless of what I'm eating. And it's like the practice of eating in itself, like chewing, swallowing, like... I don't know how to explain it, um, but just like the practice of eating is very triggering in itself. Like if I'm eating a carrot because I want something crunchy, my brain automatically thinks of, wow, I wish I was eating ch chips. And then when I start thinking of chips, sometimes I truly cannot control myself and I'll order chips from Instacart or whatever it may be. And if I'm eating like, I'm trying to eat healthy yogurt. <laughs> to get the goods, you know, because some yogurts are really good for you, like Greek yogurts. See, see, but l listen, ex you're doing exactly what you just talked about. Like, you're doing exactly the thing that you just said you're trying to get help with from your psychologist. Like, I hope maybe listening back to this would be helpful when you were editing, because you just said there's a good type of yogurt. <laughs> I'm eating a good type of healthy yogurt. Like, you just did it. This is not judgment or anything. Like, I'm just trying to, like, reflect back what you're saying so that it's, like, maybe heard in a different way. You're, do you're doing exactly what your psychologist said not to do. But no, if I'm getting triggered by anything, whether it be something that happened in my life or a food that I'm eating or a thought that I'm feeling or an emotion or whatever it may be, I am triggered into eating bad food regardless. So yeah, maybe that explains it a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, that's that's much more helpful. And I think would have been, <laughs> been helpful to say to begin with because you did originally make it sound like you were, you were binging on broccoli. It's hard to explain, but it's just like seeing someone and talking to them about like what I'm going through, they make me feel normal in a way. Sure. Like, Every time I have an appointment, it's just like an hour of me feeling normal instead of me feeling just like attacked or 
ashamed or someone who's like unhealthy like i just feel normal for a minute okay yeah. like this is probably gonna be the last time i talk about <sighs> my binging or my food struggles for a while I was gonna say it's not gonna be forever because you you do typically come back to it <laughs> you you really do but I I appreciate that you're gonna take time away from talking about it because you know you should share that with the people who have an understanding of that I'm glad that your psychologist helps you feel affirmed and validated I also hope that they're helping you overcome some of those things right because like you still have to be able to live your life outside of that hour that you spend with your psychologist. But I do think it's like a good idea to stop talking about this stuff on YouTube, which is consistent with what I've been saying for at least the last year or two, at least. On my channel, because I just feel like in this moment, I want to be able to have a free mind. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of, I don't know, I feel like I'm being put in a box a little bit. Like, Why? people want to, want me to open up so bad, but then when I do, it's like, they're trying to shove me in a box and make me someone I'm not. They, like, put words in my mouth. Like, people say that I'm a bad storyteller, so they have to, oh. really, like... Well, you, you, <laughs> bestie, you are. <laughs> you are, not people. I, well, maybe other people have said that, but I've specifically said she's a bad storyteller, because she she doesn't do a good job of communicating things at all. It, it's she the way she describes things and words things always leaves room for confusion, interpretation, misinterpretation. It's you are a bad storyteller. Fill in the lines themselves. It's it's not right. I'm a bad storyteller. It's just I can't tell you every single last drop of everything medical related in my life, like. No, that's not, like, possible. I do my best explaining things, and, like, the whole thing with my gallbladder, like, recently people are like, she's not explaining this gallbladder story, like, very well. Like, why can't she get it taken out, blah, 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 because of my size. I've tried to explain that, and... Yeah, but... <laughs> now, so, now, see, this is exactly the point, because the, the most recent time that you brought it up, it had... It wasn't about your size. It wasn't about... You said it's not severe enough it's my gallbladder's not infected enough and then a lot of people myself included said well when you used to talk about your gallbladder i'm pretty sure you said it was because of your size and now you're saying it's because <laughs> of of it not being severe enough or infected enough or whatever language you used at the time you know so it's just like yeah, thanks for proving the point. You're a bad storyteller and or a liar and or your story changes. I don't know. I just feel like people want to be confused so people can no. be lying about stuff. No. Just like, I, I would love to not be confused. Like I just said, like I'm glad you clarified the thing about the broccoli because the way you explained that broccoli, originally you made it sound like you're going to go binge on broccoli. I don't know. I just feel like I need to take the binging and the medical talk away. Yeah, um, we we come to this conclusion every two to three months. We're right on track. Just focus very much on, like, this is what I'm doing in my day-to-day -day life. Um, work with love. Just showing you guys what I'm doing. With love. Like having these deep discussions because it's not helping me at all. At all. And I just want to do things that make me feel better. Please. And as of right please. now, talking about stuff like this is not making me feel better. Okay, so then stop. Now yeah. I just have to decide if I actually want to continue the weigh-ins on here. I would say no. I guess we'll see. I would say I would say no. I I would have to say no. <laughs> uh, if if you don't want to talk about the the weight loss, the binging, the whoever, whatever. I'll understand how showing your weigh-ins every day would be helpful. And I'm 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 not going to pull out the candle, the hat, the earrings, none of that cuz I don't really feel like that was a definitive yes or no despite the title being I'm done. Um but I just ooh, I just I wish she would yeah, please do save that stuff. <laughs> I'm not going to be mad if you quit it. If you stick to actually quitting it, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't come back in a month or two and be like, okay, I'm going to talk about this all again and then get upset again because it's just like, 
not a good use of your time. It really isn't. It just, I don't know how else to say that again. You feel me? Like, I just, you need to stop, like, talking about it. And then please do show, I will take, well... I don't know what I really want to commit to, but like show show me more of your doodles if you have to. I'm genuine when I say I would love for therapy and everything like that to work out for you. And it seems like based on if I'm taking you at your word, that that's a helpful place for you to discuss these things. And I'd be curious to know what your psychologist thinks about you talking about all of these things online and reading the responses, because it's clear that even when it comes to like the food stuff, that it is causing you to go into the place where you're talking about good and bad foods, which your therapist is trying to get you to stop thinking about. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to, like, keep repeating myself, which I feel like I did a lot in this video. Uh, you know, this is not the first time I've been around for her quitting something, one. Uh, not the first time I've been around for her saying, like, I'm no longer going to talk about weight loss stuff on my channel. I'm not a weight loss channel. I'm a vlogging channel. You know, I'm, it's not my first time for any of these things. And I think that's what makes it so frustrating and irritating. Like, truly. So, yeah. Uh, that's all I have for today. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. And if you're brand new, make sure to subscribe down below and hit the bell button so you get notifications. Feel free to leave me a comment. Hit like, click share, and follow me on all my social media. Don't forget that my merch shop has a 15% discount this weekend for the Black Friday slash Cyber Monday sale. So, if you've been thinking about getting some merch, now's a great time to do it. I love you all so much, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!